<clears throat> hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ahu here with KissAnalog.com. Oh yeah, my bench hasn't moved much. I still have the AIMA A07 Max. We're gonna, we're really jumping into testing here. Um, these first few amps that I test, we're gonna see how the tests work out and see which ones we like and which ones we think differentiate one amp to another. Okay, and plus I'll do them a lot faster. I'll, you know, do a bunch of testing and you guys tell me which ones you like to see the the test occur, you know, and I can speed it up too. Anyway, this test that we're going to do today is, it's the test that you do intermodulation distortion, okay, intermodulation distortion. So what you do, uh, there's a couple different tests that are set up. Essentially, you put two different frequencies in, okay. So let's just say you put 1K and 2K, or 1K and 3K for instance. Well, you know you have harmonics, you know, there are always multiples of the uh, fundamental frequency that you put in. So if 1K, that's your fundamental. 2K, that'd be your uh, second harmonic and your even harmonic too. And then 3K is your uh, third harmonic, which is also your first, well, your first odd harmonic, okay? So we know we can get harmonics from nonlinearities. So when we have this nice sine wave, if it's pure sine wave, we don't get the harmonics. But if it starts to flat top, we get lots of them because the square wave is essentially built with a whole bunch of uh, sine waves, right? So, uh, and those sine waves are like if they're harmonics and there's different content, you can, different amplitudes of different frequencies, you combine them all together, you get a square wave, all right? So, um, so the thing is, is if you put, say that one kilohertz in, and if there is some distortion, it's usually the worst of the uh, third harmonic, odd harmonics. And so if you put another tone in a th uh, 3K, then that's gonna add to that harmonic and it's gonna increase in value. Well, then also you're gonna get harmonics from that one. So, and because they're, you know, you're they're gonna, what some people refer to it as is beat frequencies. Like you can get two frequencies. Well, that third harmonic is beating against that 3K signal you put in. So you get a beat frequency. So here's the thing about uh, total harmonic distortion. Some people will claim that, well, a little bit of THD, a little bit of harmonic distortion is actually okay. And the ears actually are almost... Uh, accepting that kind of distortion is a, a normal, almost a natural thing. So it's almost like it's not as grating to our ears as other types of distortion, okay? So uh, so one of the test frequencies is seven kilohertz and 60 hertz, okay? And that's called, I think some people pronounce it as a SIMT, the SMTPE um, test. And the reason they do that, I think, and now it goes way back, okay? I think it was the Motion Pictures Engineering Society or something like that uh, came up with this test. And I kind of wonder if they chose 60 hertz because of our 60 hertz in the U.S. And then they wanted to see what 7 kilohertz. Well, 7K and 60. Now, what if they would have chose 6K? That, that would be like a, a harmonic of the 60 hertz, right? But the fact that 7K... It's kind of an odd, on an odd frequency. So it's interesting. So what happens is whenever you inject two signals at the same time, what will happen is you'll get different frequencies occurring. You'll get, so say at 7K, you'll see 7K minus 60 hertz. You'll see a little bump there. So you see the spike at 7K and then you see this little spike at right below 7K, and then you see a, a spike right above 7K. It'll be 7K plus 60 hertz. Well, then over here at 60 hertz, you'll see one, but at 7 kilohertz, you'll see these, and some, and they're referred to as sideband sometimes. So you see these little sideband things. And those frequencies, so those are not harmonics of 7K, right? Because 7K, you'd be 8K, 9K, 10K or subharmonics of that would be 7K, 6K, but not 
6,940 hertz and six or 7,060 hertz. You won't see that as our harmonic of 7K. So those frequencies, the ear doesn't like, and it's like, oh, that's, that's noise, that's trash, we don't like it. So these, uh, so some people feel that these intermodulation harmonic distortions are actually worse than THDs. And so that's why they came up with them. They thought they're more revealing of how an amplifier uh, would sound. So there's that test frequencies. There's different ones, okay? The other very, the, probably the next most common one is the one that they call it the ITU, I think, dash R. It's the 19 and 20 kilohertz signals. So they go all the way up to 20 kilohertz and then 19 kilohertz, okay? So that's kind of weird because they go all the way out to where, kind of where you can't hear, right? But what's interesting about that is there's one kilohertz separation. So when you add, you do all this adding and subtracting to find out all the other harmonics, uh, the other frequencies, don't want to call them harmonics, I guess, but the other frequencies um, caused by, by these, this inner modulation distortion, you'll find one at one kilohertz, okay? So it's the 20 minus the 19, you get a spike over here at 1K. And what they found is that the ear picks up on that one. So that one they kind of focus on. And they go, yeah, so you do this, you do these two things. Oh, and by the way, I kind of forgot to mention, um, when you put these two signals in, they're the same amplitude as each other, okay? And then you go over and look at one kilohertz and you measure that and you see how high it is. And hopefully it's not very high because that'll give you some kind of value on how good that amp's gonna sound. That's what the theory is. The one, what I didn't mention to you is on that 60 hertz and 7K, it's a four to one ratio. So it's the um, 60 hertz is four times higher in amplitude than the seven kilohertz, okay? So yeah, I forgot to mention that part of it. But anyway, so they, they, they come up with these, you know, they probably did a whole bunch of experimentation testing to come up with these tests but these things go back to God, i want to say the 30s like way back when they started coming out with a motion picture so so a long time ago you know people probably listen to headphones and they're like wow this doesn't sound good why and then they tried to figure out why and so you know they weren't marketing or trying to sell amplifiers on amazon or anything they were trying to figure out like Hey, we want people to watch our movies, but we don't want them to cringe with, with our sound. So we want our sound to be good. How do we determine what is good sound and what's a good amp fire and what's a bad amp? So anyway, these two tests came up. We're going to test them. It's going to be a lot shorter than all my talk right here, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, next time I do it, it'll be much faster because I'll just say, hey, we're going to do this test, okay? So... Hey, let's do this test. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and do this test. Um, I'm going to come up here to the automated tests. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to this IMD, ITU. And we're going to do the power one, okay? So let's do this. Now, these are those values. This is about, what was it? It's right close to 100 watts. And this is close to one watt okay we're gonna do five db increments and we're gonna do two orders uh i'll explain that another time but let's go ahead and run this test and for this time I, i'll sit here i'm gonna move this i'll sit here and we can watch this because i think it's pretty fast so uh I'll, i might speed it up i'll stop talking oh well actually sorry over here you see these two frequencies we're injecting and you see them going up and up and up and you see these guys down here? These are those sidebands with their harmonics. Wow, see? I told you that was fast test. Let me zoom open. Okay, look at that. So this is our power. So what did we get to? That's so that's 110. So it's you know, it's saying we're gosh, we're 115, 117 watts or something. I didn't know we were going that high, but okay. Uh on the test, I put in 8 ohms, so it knows the value, so it knows how to calculate that. And here's down here, uh, uh, close to the 1 watt, okay? So, I mean, the IMD down here, minus 100 dB is crazy good. 
90 dB is awesome. But then, you know, from 90 on up, it's starting 80 still, it's still okay. But yeah, then this is starting to get a little bit higher, but we are getting very loud here too, right? So if, you know, I kind of feel like all the way up to 50 or 60 watts, a lot of the measurements look really good. And then after that, you know, like you can just see this ramp up, kind of like we saw the THDs, which this actually will kind of go along with THD. Here, now let me go in here in the title. Let's go, oh, you know what? I forgot to show you something, but here, go. let's go IEMA. I think this is IUD test. Okay, let me show you something, guys. We're gonna shrink this down, and I'll show you the last result of this test. So here, let me pull this down. C1 kilohertz, so right here, when we're at uh, uh, the high amplitude, okay? So that's 20, you know, that's 25, 28 dB. Right here at 1K, we're about, what, 35, 25, 30, 35. So we're, we're around minus 35 dB. So that's kind of a signal to noise ratio there, but that's minus 35 dB compared to these two, okay? So, there's all these guys in here, but this 1K is the difference between these two signals. So that's what that looks like, physically looks like, okay? So this one, so this is the I, ITU test, okay? Yeah, what, what I did IUD. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what I was thinking. I was not thinking, I guess. I was typing and just thinking about what I was going to show you next. Uh, here, automated tests. What I wanted to show you is when I ran this test. I set this up, and right here you get to check which test. Oh, there's the ITU. But and then the next, we'll run this test. We'll run this test next. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And yeah, this is and here's the load impedance. We got eight ohms, so it calculates the power force. So let's go ahead and run it again. I'll move this window if I have time goes pretty fast okay now this one is at 7k so there's a 7k signal and four times higher is the 60 hertz signal so that's this one right over here so you see them creeping up you see these noises and the c7k you plus minus you see the 60 hertz stuff out here and okay so we're going to add to a new graph okay let me Put a new title on that it's kind of interesting that it starts to do a title for me all right so there we go but now let's look at the graph here let me blow up the picture so it's interesting that it kind of kind of took off there so if this is 20 watts that's five watts so and then it dropped back down but this is still way way below 90 so this is really low guys but then it does creep up. See, around 60 watts, we're still below 90. But then, see, you know, it kind of creeps up. And, you know, minus 75 is still, I think, relatively low, especially when you're playing close to 120 watts. But it's over 100 watts for sure. But, yeah, so, but look how linear that is, that growth. That's just, there's actually a small slope if i can see that correctly right about here i don't know if it, it just kind of looks like that to me right here but there you go guys what do you think all right guys so what do you think of that there's your imd intermodulation distortion so it's where you put two frequencies in or multiple frequencies now these are the automated tests set up by uh the quant asylum the qa403 really nice software Really cool that you have all these automated tests set up. Um, makes it quick and easy. I'm going to do some more tests once we get done. You know, I started off with the Omicron, right? We did a body plot. And then we did the quant assign. We've done a couple, several videos at this point. Now I am going to go to, well, we got a few more tests to do with this, okay? Then after that, I've got a few tests I'm going to do, you know, with. A different way okay and i'll show you that too and also i've got to introduce a really cool instrument right down here so we got a few more videos to test we're going to really run this through the ringer 
and then we're going to see which tests were meaningful and which ones I'm going to use to run all these other amps I've got around here. <laughs> all right, so let me know what you guys think about this. Um, interesting. This has had a lot of good press. A lot of people like the sound of it. So it's just interesting to take these measurements, right? Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Oh, all right, guys. So I want to give two big thumbs up to my patrons and my members of my channel. You've become a member hitting the button down there and or going to the patreon thing but you know i think it's awesome that anybody wants to join the channel or become a patreon thing that's really awesome another way to support the channel is just to hit the like button subscribe that'd be big help grow the channel that'd be really big okay uh, appreciate it guys and um what else do i want to say oh there's a super thank you button down there you can buy me a beer a coffee i'm gonna do a rant friday i think i got I want to do a live video with my patrons and my YouTube members, and so I'm I'm gearing up for that. I don't know if I'm gonna be ready this weekend, but I think. Tell me what day of the week you think. I'm thinking. I was doing these Tech Talk Fridays. I almost feel like doing it on Tech Talk Friday day and and doing that instead or something. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.